to another thrilling edition of Black Opinions Matter, motherfucker. It's the number one independent podcast network in the world, Chico. My name is Amino Hassan. I'm joined, as always, by Black Trey, Big Jerv, and Big Waz. Rob Lopez is on the one and twos. We got a great show for you guys today. It's uh, the 30th anniversary of DJ Quick's first album coming out. We're going to talk about that. We might go into a little bit of early 2000s fashion faux pas, courtesy of one fabuloso, in case you ain't know so. Uh, we talk about the second part of the Tiger Woods documentary. Do you like the song, Ooh Baby, I Like It Raw? We'll talk about that. And then we'll wrap up with A Night in Miami. That's a Regina King movie about the night Muhammad Ali defeated Sonny Liston. It's on Amazon Prime. You should check it out if you haven't yet, because we're going to talk about it today. All right, let's start the show. I never understood how y'all tucked your uh your motherfucking uh y'all, y'all shirts into y'all khakis. I just I mean listen, but I, I I never knocked it. It just it just was what it was. Like I just I never got that. Yeah, it was it was just some fly shit though, like same way niggas you um air the steam, steam your drawers, nigga. You steam your fucking boxers. And damn, also say what um, razor steam your boxers. Gang say what? Shit. That that's you different steam from your like just washing boxers, them? bro. <laughs> No, Wash it and dry. You have it. You have it, and you steam it so like it all be with your crease. You know, your boxers. Can't be right. Your boxers. Nigga, you lay it flat and you put it and you steam it, and then from there when you put it on, it's it's just it's just as crisp as your pants because you got razor you got razor um razor razor sharp um crease cuffs nigga on the on the on the dickies. It, Yo, it, it's some gangster shit. Is- Yo, the shit niggas like, That's what I'm saying. The shit for niggas cleaning the dope boy shit on the um Peyton Full when a nigga, you know, money making Mitch was, you know, like that's the thing. Like wearing your G Nikes, nigga, and spraying them and, and cleaning them up and then having your shit creased and sitting on top of your, because we ain't wear them like crazy baggy to the point of that. It's like niggas sitting on your, your G Nikes or your Converse. Like it was certain shoes you, you wore and just to represent, you know what I'm saying? Because the essay is really. The, the Mexican homies really made the Cortez what it is, the high socks with the mm. Cortez, and then we kind of just flipped it. <clears throat> they even wore the Compton hat after Easy died and kept it going, and then YG kind of brought it back on some shit like that, because we really just kind of flipped to like, oh, every hat. Like, where I'm from, we wear the Phillies hat. So, but we wear the maroon, like the, the burgundy. You know what I'm saying? And In LA, Bloods wear red, and then in Compton, we wear burgundy because it's it's pyro, it's pimps and red uniforms. You know what I'm saying? But it's way more than what it is. So when Quick, Quick was the first nigga openly gangbanging on wax. Like openly, like nigga, I'm a blood. You know what I'm saying? Like making yeah. that shit. Because NWA was just kind of like, look, we're straight out yeah. of Compton. We're getting arrested. This is the shit. We're telling the street side. And DJ Quick is like, telling the story side of what you're seeing. So it's like, it's like watching Boys in the Hood in Men's Society. You seen Boys in the Hood and you like, damn, okay, that nigga Ricky could have made it out of the hood. You see Men's Society, a whole nother type of, you know, B&E, niggas mm. getting stumped out in the projects. Like that's how, it's just a whole nother grind. So when you listen to Quick as the Name, it might not hit to the certain audience, but if you from there, it's like, yeah. yes, nigga, please yeah. tell my story. You know what I'm saying? Because he's seeing it like, oh, I know how to play the piano. Oh, I know how to play the drums. I know how to do all that shit. But that shit corny to niggas in the hood. (laughs) And also to a point of you looking around and everybody making money but you. You know what I'm saying? Because he really was a DJ. That's how he, you know, that was the thing. Dr. Dre was the first person to really kind of get it going. And then everybody's like, oh, I'm a, you know, it's just like, oh, Waz podcast. Oh, I'm about to start a podcast too. You know what I'm saying? And think it's kind of easy, but Quick was actually, he had an ear and he was house party DJing, but he looking around like this, this DJing stuff ain't really paying. I got to learn how to sell crack so I can buy my equipment 
and start making records, you know, like, cause Too Short and them really kind of taught niggas how to independently hustle music wise. And once yeah. he found out like, oh, let me hustle, get enough money, buy my equipment, then start making my own stuff, sell it out the trunk, and now I'm on. And the thing about Quick is that he was able to rap along with the production. So when he making shit and scratching and doing all this, you know what I mean? He was really one of them niggas that's turning and doing all... He, he, <laughs> he, uh, you know what I'm saying? He really was one of them niggas. But like, I would see him as a kid come through my neighborhood, fly ass, BMW, Beamer, you all the shit. He the first nigga to bring the Puerto Rican chick to the Compton. 91 <laughs> NSX, bro. He in the NSX, permed out, hair long, fingernails, mm. you know, sparkly. Like, they really was on that, hey, I'm a pimp. Like, I'm a PI. Like, well, player was used differently back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, now it's like, oh, you got a lot of girls. Even though that should be the definition of it, it was kind of like, because pimping is kind of a little more looked down upon in certain neighborhoods. So you want to be a player more than the pimp. Yes. Yes, so, a play... A pl- a player does it for pleasure. A pimp is exploiting women. There you go. So David, so so quote unquote David Blake, you know what I'm saying? He he the only nigga talking about getting it off like I'm wearing a velour suit, a, a velour suit with my 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 gold chain, my shit on button. I'm in the NSX, I'm doing donuts, like you know what I'm saying? Like I'm in Compton, I'm getting money just like everybody else. And then he really is a musical genius on the on the sound side. He, you know what I mean? Like he cool with Warren G's mm-hmm. and, and Dr. Dre bringing him in. Like, hey, what you think about this? Him and G1 coming to actually mix privately. It's kind of like how Teddy Riley would do Pharrell and Chad. Right. Thanks. And then you're like, and then you're like, oh shit, Quick actually worked on this. So then he's flipping um what I was telling Jer before y'all came on. What's the shit that? Da, 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 that what's that shit? Uh, the rock uh, shit. Oh, I thought that was uh, that was uh, the oh, that was game. Y'all love and so the he, game is so oh, he, yeah. so he flipped that into let's get down for Tony Tony Tone. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's get down, let's get down, let's get down. Come on, let's get down in my black Chevrolet. Like I'm, I'm so happy Trey is doing this because. A lot of people don't really know about Quick's influence, prominence, you know what I'm saying? Like, just the people that came under and after him, whether it be the Snoops and everybody after, it's like, he's part of that legacy before them, and he had hits, you know, throughout the decades. He's still doing it. His son is rapping now. It's to a point where he's produced on All Eyes on Me, he's produced on everything that we possibly have enjoyed West Coast musically-wise. And in the scenario, I look at it as he's a nigga that brought us Peter Guns. He's a nigga that brought us fucking to produce for Shaq on mm. some of the shit that we really liked. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> when Twism, when Twism was a thing, he's the only the world nigga, is mine. He's the, really, <laughs> he's the only nigga really fucking with them at that particular time. He's a nigga to dig El DeBarge out the grave and throw him on shit. Like, Brought let me back, save yeah. your save your life, bro, before yeah. Kanye got credit for it. And shout, was like, shout out to L. The Bars, dude, too, bro. That's that was when light skinned niggas was uh, we was we was rather prominent during the L. The Bars era, my brothers. Hey man, and then again, saved Corrupt's career, and did an album, a joint album with him. So the thing is, is that he really enjoys. He's a student of the music. I'm surprised that you know, obviously, Hove is a fan of music. Put him on Black Album because that's rare yeah. to be like out of all the producers. I right. gotta give me a quick one. Now, quick could have gave him some shit, but like I, I can't say, possibly that, think that, that wasn't that wasn't one of my favorite songs on that. Justify album. my thug was a strange it's mix. A, it, in it was that a album. lot of that's Hope's fault. I bet you he had some yeah. other fire. It was probably you know. the transitions in it and how the placement of the album, but I can't picture Hope on some like really jazzy, smooth I, shit I, versus show me what you got. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, cause that's what Quick would have gave him some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure Ho was like, "Yo, I need some heavy beat." Cause you know, um, bum, 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 when bum, the bum, bubble bum, in bum, trouble, bum. when the bubble in trouble, like that. I'm sure he asked for that heavy West yeah. Coast bass yeah. type shit, and it was like, "What you think about this?" And I could see Jay Z over here like, 
quick question. Da, 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 da. You with know his, what I mean? Like, reverse head bop with the reverse. You know how he bop his head backward rather than forward. Yeah, he's 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 that nigga. But you Yo, know, was quick on the uh, the documentary. I don't remember the. No, I don't remember him showing quick. He's okay. not. He's not on there. But um, for That's people not. from people from where I'm from, man, like he is, and he has one of the nastiest discs too to MC8. Basically, killed my man career. Um, <laughs> It was yeah. very disres- it was very disrespectful. Um, nigga said um, you that you spell your name eight without the G because the G ain't in you. Like <laughs> he was going so hard, and like that was really a kind of scary time in Compton because MCA was from like Trag New, and Quick is from Treetop where YG is from. So you know the Blood Crip thing was just really intense, dog. But you know, don't make dollars, don't make sense, just like Compton. I just want to give David Blake his flowers, 30 years in the game, doing his Salute. Thing. You that know was I mean? beautiful. Shout out to okay. shout out to you too, bro. Cause you be you be having me remember uh I'll be mis- I'll be misremembering a lot of things. And I don't give quick enough uh flowers. I really don't. I think if he and- did a versus and he actually showed his catalog, just how like niggas with Riza and, and Primo. Did and niggas be like, oh, he actually touched that. Like he gave us yeah, Troop right. Hurts, even though Troop Hurts kind of fucked up her own little shit situation. Oh shit! Yo, that I love that song, and it is not available anywhere. They must have it's fucked up big time on the sample. Yep. it's not wow. on streaming. The and sample he- must have been the radioactive. <laughs> I, man, he so, gave us sugar so, free. We wouldn't have Sugar Free without Quick. We wouldn't have Mossberg, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? He 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 got a chance, man. Like, like again, he, he took a chance on a lot of people, man, just trying to see his vision. But he lost a lot of people, too, in the process. That was a the thing. They blamed the whole Biggie shit on, on DJ Quick. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Wait, who I thought it was, you know, know, what do you I thought mean? it was E4. I remember. Because he, he went to the party. Right. And every time that DJ Quick would go to a party, it was quote unquote gang violence. Mm. Uh, cause he's so, the only, cause before Snoop, Snoop was calm. Like you gotta think about this. Snoop yeah. was known as a crip, but he was more universal artist than right. Quick. When you see Quick coming to shit, it was like blood's own. And if something <laughs> got shot up, he got dragged and everything. So when he put out, use a gangster, no, I'm not. He had to say, it. he said, somebody got choked out at my, at my, at my party, nigga died. It wasn't, and the motherfuckers blamed it on me. What the hell? He said, how can I choke somebody out? I'm only 155 pounds. So, Trey, you know what's funny? I was, I was, I watched the big doc once, like a few years ago, and somebody from, I forget who it was from Big's crew, was like, you know, we went outside, and the first thing he saw, he said, DJ Quick was on his phone, on his cell phone. He's like, yo, they got that nigga. Not like I got him or yeah. I wanted this to happen, but I knew they had problems with him, with mm-hmm. them, and mm-hmm. the shit just happened. Like he was on his phone. It was like, yo, they got this nigga. Yeah, yeah, it was more so on some shit like not even it's like fu- it's, it's just it was up. Yeah, it is what it like. Not like oh, good for him. Not, it's just like yeah. we knew it was bound to happen. They got this nigga. It's crazy. Yeah. Shout out what? to the wood. I just remember when when Trey was saying like anytime Quick was somewhere, it was a bunch of blood there. Everybody in the wood were talking about let's go to that corner store. Nah, nigga, that's Blood Central over there. <laughs> I mean, that's how that's how it normally is. But again, he was one of the first people that anytime something really went ha- like if he was at a vibe party, if he was here or he was there, they blame it on Quick because he was an openly blood. He opened the right. doors for game and and whoever you that's ever so ill like i i I'd never for me obviously as an east coast idiot i just assumed snoop was the first person um cripping and banging on wax and in videos and like that was my first experience with it i didn't realize that dj quick <laughs> opened the floodgates like he's for that. literally he's easy easy, literally easy wasn't a crip Okay, nah, my, I don't, don't want to say no, no. My I don't want to say that on wax. Bad. My bad. Uh, in, but he did live in Kelly Park, Compton Crip. <laughs> I ain't gonna put him out there. <laughs> but I ain't gonna associate him with that. I ain't gonna try to taint his legacy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're not hey, gonna, hey. we not gonna denigrate the legacy of the legend. But he wasn't a crip. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, Trey moved to New York. All of a sudden, it's, 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 
Hey, I'm not, yeah, yeah. not hey. going to put his business on the streets, but he wasn't All I'm a crib. saying is in 91, my man was wearing a Philly hat for a reason and dressed up in red. <laughs> That's all. Facts. I, I, I never saw that shit. Because, like, yo, I'll I mean, be... You look, never mind. You look at all his covers, you look at all his photo clothes. shoots, he's wearing a P hat. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So when you, uh, you jerk, you come to L.A., you're going to think, like, the, oh, the, you the pirates like the Phillies? Yeah. you like, you like the right. Phillies? Oh, it's love. I it's remember trying like, break hey, down the different affiliations with every hat. Yo, like that's what I yo, that's yo, that's that's some real West Coast show. Y'all son. niggas took the took the joy out of wearing jerseys. The hat. And shit. Niggas so, are talking about cow you wearing a cowboys jersey. That's because Crips always son. win, but yeah. oh, you know, like I'm son. like blood the, bulls is bloods under law. So I'm like, come on, man. Son, one yeah. kid I appreciate is it right worse now than Chicago? on Instagram. Um, it's up there with it. Cause you know, oh, yeah, Chicago but Chicago has doesn't do the clothes shit. It's, it's not just how based you on the, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the hat. Literally, a hat, a hat means that you are part of a certain game. And yeah. it's crazy because, like, there's this store that I'm pretty sure is still there, which I'm sure Amin knows about called Four Seasons on the Coliseum block in Jamaica, Queens. And, like, uh -huh. that's where you went. They would have fucking hats in every colorway from every major sport. Like, yeah. and it was a thing, like, Oh shit! I, I, you know, I just got this purple, you know, yep. whatever. I need to get deep joint to that match. deep back purple like, had to go with it, yeah. Bruh, the hat buying hats was like a, you know, what I mean, it was like a ritual almost. So when Trey explained to me, he's like, "Nigga, you can't wear every hat around here, son. It's, yeah. It gets stupid about it." I was like, "Wow, that's just, you know, it's crazy." I really love that kid Xavier TV on Instagram. How he drops, he does the TikToks of uh, press ratios, and. It tells you what school you went to from elementary. Like, you <laughs> already have a choice. Like, oh, she went there? Okay, don't mess with her. She probably got some cousins that's from over there. If you wear this hat, because he did a hat one, and he was saying, like, okay, and I'll tell you, if you wear a Yankee hat, you're a crib. If you wear a Philly hat, you're a blood. If you wear a Kansas City Royal hat, you're a crib. If you wear a Colorado Rockies hat, you're a crib. <laughs> like... You can St. Louis Cardinals, you're blood. If you wear a Washington Nationals hat, you're blood. Like Dodger hat might be the only safe hat. Is in Dodgers LA. safe? Is it safe? It, like because it, it don't mean nothing. It's just L.A. Okay, I would really just, just the blue. City. I would have thought the blue. No, because the blue is because it's a shit, real team, you know? though. But like it's like it's a real team in the city. You could root for the team that's in the city. Yeah, I feel you. So I feel Texas, you Texas, Texas Rangers. Is a hood. Houston Astros is a hood. Seattle Mariners is 60s. You know wow. what I'm saying? Houston Astros is Hoovers. Like, you really don't want to wear They beat these like niggas, these <laughs> niggas done stole the joy Seth, out of everything. Seth, I knew it was ridiculous when I seen game with a red Dodgers jersey. I was like, yo, this is not an <laughs> alternate. <laughs> the thing I love about New York is y'all have all types of flavors of hats. And Tell that's you. an L.A. nigga's dream to right. come back with your hood with, hat in a specific color that they right because they don't right. se they don't sell that in L.A. for a reason right because oh y'all y'all never got like the red Yankee hat the green right, Yankee right. hat the like, pink we Yankee, just now we just now got that Yankee. we just now oh, got that that, that was that's really a problem I, son it was ridiculous that was like a, the colorways they were coming with the hats were ridiculous. royal blue with the silver new york logo on it man we was doing all time like so it was like it was literally the raiders hat that was pink and green it's like yo bro the, the raiders this has no affiliation with anything raiders no. for real like that colorway but it's just they would flip every single colorway yo cap city and jersey that was the first hat place that i liked was like Yo, I found a green and red Fresno State Bulldogs hat. And I was like, I got to have it. How much? 30 cash. And I came out here in 2008, and I just was buying every hat. So when I came back, I was the man. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, because it reminded me of Fab. I was wearing size 7, exactly. 3, 8, exactly. 7, 5, 8. So not you're just sad. like trying not, to match this fast. Just, not, we not, bring not, up Fab not, a lot on this pod, but he did have us looking foolish in the early 2000s. He... Absolutely. We were Fab's looking like the, bozos, but we thought we were the shit. Fab's the reason that the jersey game got messed up. The reason that high, all of a sudden niggas was rocking high school jerseys. And it's like, y'all don't even know Yo, the fucking the way, jersey jer had on. The sneaker nerds be frying this dude on the internet now for when he was rocking the variants. 
the fake Jordans back in the days. He gets oh, fried for that. <laughs> Yo, at, the you know, time, at the time, he was a king, though. I was like, oh, he's exactly. got... How'd he get those? Exactly. <laughs> but it, it ain't it ain't just it ain't just him. Like not even on celebrity. Like I I remember that specifically. I had this homie. I ain't even gonna put him out there. Um, this is Man, right. Mark, when, my hell? No, no. College, right? <laughs> like when, when niggas. What, what's it? E- eBay. When nigga, when eBay first yeah. kind of first came East out. eBay or eBay. eBay. Okay. Come on, eBay. eBay. Now East eBay's the catalog, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, eBay. And you can go on. And my man was like, "Yo, if you go in there and you type in Jordan." Um, it wasn't DS. It was some other abbreviation uh-huh. afterwards. All these so Jordans were, came up that you never variant. saw. My Bruh. man had a pair. My man had a pair. So of, nice. So nice cakes. I think it was Royal Blue. Nice cakes became nice cakes. Was the nice cakes and cool cakes were mm-hmm. the variant sites cool where you can cakes. get yep. fake shoes. Yep. I and remember my son had a pair of um, Royal Blue Jordan Eleven highs. No. Uh, <laughs> no. So, no. I, I ordered some. I, I ordered some back back when scamming was in credit card profiles. Mm. And statue of limitations got, is up, feds. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I got the white and blue 11s high top. But, but when they came, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm 11 and a half, 12, they were like a 10, nigga. A they 10. still rock. Shit. And I rocked them shit, but my foot was like this. Oh my I god! Just balled up like a no. fist. So I'm in class. I mean, I'm in class. My left foot is cool. My right foot is in hell. Like I'm pressed up. I'm taking the shoe off, and I got the shoe to the side, resting my foot. Then when I got to walk, bro, I'm walking like, and it was so crazy because I really wanted to be fab when I like was 17, 18. So I wore like size 60 New Jersey Nets, Jason Kidd, authentic. You know what I mean? With the Argyle on the side. Yes, sir. Navy yeah. blue. And I'm yes, sir. like, ah. Then I had, um, I got the white and red. Um, I had a Marcus Canby, um, Rainbow Skyline, size 60, uh, mm. swing man. And I had the white and red 18s be- like five months before they came out. Fake as hell. <laughs> Busting them down. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm at Magic Mountain like, son. Like, you can't talk to me. Pictures. Oh, and people man. were like, oh, my God, when they'll come out? I'm like, soon. But I knew they was coming out, but it looked like I had them crazy early. You know so I love it. I love you. I love What's the, the craziest the Gucci, jersey y'all had? The Gucci print on the um the forces. When Jada did it, I said, oh, yeah, oh, no. God, oh, oh, no, absolutely. That's the Gucci print, the Burberry print, the like, yeah. all of those, man. Yeah. It was out of control. Jer- Jer- that's the craziest jersey. Craziest um, jersey. I, 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 I think know. My I, favorite, I, I had a Bill Walton joint for um the Blazers. The Rip City one? Those was clean mm-hmm. though. That yeah, was a clean one. That was my favorite one. Well, it's the craziest. Yeah. You, you mean crazy Everybody this, had that bullet joint. Crazy. By the way. Like crazy. Like, literally, like, I feel like that was the most popular one. Hold the on. West Unsell crazy bullet shit. But Jerk, do you mean crazy like yo, know, that's my like like, like dope? Or, dope or crazy like niggas wow. looking back like what were you doing like cr- crazy crazy in the sense was like yo you had no business rocking that jersey okay like that yeah i'm gonna like, tell you what i need to wear that is. shit it was oh a, my it was, god the houston oilers joint so oh, fucking the, ugly yeah, and it's uh, like the it's, warm it's, moon it's, oh man yeah it, and you're wearing it all big and it's powder blue and oh my do you, god did you do wristbands with it was the wrist, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, for sure, by- for sure. Headband too, everything. Headband, and, yo, everything. Uh, Trey, what what was yours? Man, so Kev will always tell you how the story about Team Cash. I had every jersey, every jersey, every Mitchell and Ness jersey potentially out at that particular time that they were rolling out, and I would let my teammates hoop in them. And Kev coached the team at this part, and um. I don't think I had any really nasty jerseys, but I had like San Antonio George Gervin. I yeah. had Buff Bob McAdoo Buffalo Braves. Like, I'm telling you, I wanted to be fab, bro. So I was getting <laughs> everything. I had Dominique Wilkins. And when Hove killed us off and said, oh, yeah, we don't wear jerseys no more, yeah. I was sick to my stomach because that's like over like a whole four, closet. That's like three grand of worth of jerseys that yeah. I got rid of. A whole closet with jerseys. So Yo, I, would say- Yo. I even had the UNK jeans with them too. The, with the NBA patches all over. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah oh, no. Oh, you had the patches? Yeah, oh, the my patches. God. No. No, not the patches. Derb, Derb, what was yours? Um, 
so in the crazy in the sense that I that I that I'm speaking, like I I it, it probably was even like a a, a Fugazi jersey, right? Like I had a um um when the Eagles the Eagles played, they had like these uh, anniversary joints from like 1930 or something like that. They were they were ugly as hell. They were blue and yellow, and all the players that played in them had them. And my man had was selling them outside of the trunk, outside of a path mark that I was at, and he had a Reggie White one. That I mean, in all by, Reggie, rest in peace, right? But but by, by all accounts, it's fake, right? Like Reggie White ain't playing that game. But you couldn't tell me anything. I didn't care. I had some sneaks that matched it. I had like a hat to go with it. And you know, at that time, everybody was getting it off, right? Like you know, it was, yeah. it was, it was how wild. Can and we had we had a fake Jersey spot in New York too. I think it was on like Twenty Third Street, if I'm not mistaken. I forget where it was, but you yo. Man's was, you was getting the the white tees for discount from that spot. So it was like a one-stop shop. Like you got the white tees that you rocked under the jerseys when you didn't yep. just feel like making the white tee your dress shirt anyway. Yep. <laughs> and you got the fake jersey at the same spot. I'm pretty sure it was some African homies running that joint, man. It was the game was so nasty back Yo, then. So so my my, my shit, I'm I'm torn between two, and I, I actually have them right here. Because, you know, I record at my old house now. And all this stuff is in boxes and it's right here. So this one isn't a fake. But I used to rock this shit. I thought I was that nigga. This is a, a New York Rangers hockey jersey. Oh, wow. wow. It's oh, a man. special edition with a sweater. Stat- with sweater. the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I used to rock this shit with a, with a do-rag, with a red do-rag. <laughs> with a bright red do-rag. You couldn't, and the white headband. You couldn't tell me shit. Oh, I was out here like, like I thought going to parties like that, not like oh go to the mall with them. Like no, no, I'm, no. I'm dressed to the nines right now. As I might as well as, have a tuxedo on. As far as the fake goes, and this one is just special. Oh, this is Barry Sanders National. This oh, is a Lord. let me see what size Ron this Artes. is. Is that Ron? Ron, Ron, Ron Artes Artes Ron. St. John's, wow. John's man. Wow. Uh, set, like size 60 or something like that. It's wow. Humongous. Does it say like, Artes on the back? No, it doesn't even say our test on the back. Oh it's the worst God. part. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're like this. I had yeah, a, uh, yeah, a Rock on Bell jersey. Yo, hold on. Oh hold on. Oh, my God. So. Well, I don't even think this is a St. John's jersey. I think it's the <laughs> generic blank Jordan. It's an actual Jordan white jersey. But, like, when you see the St. John's, I'm going to hold it up to the camera for those who are going to watch this on YouTube. It's screen printed. You can tell because oh there's the, tr- the trade. The it's, trademark it's, it's is right trademark there. Trademark on it. That's crazy it's, that you're even wearing that. Lord have mercy. I would have been. I would have been ragging on you like homie from Paper Soldiers <laughs> with the Supreme. I mean, with the Supreme Thirty Three. Remember, my man said that's not even the real Patrick Ewing. Who the fuck is Supreme Thirty <laughs> Three? Oh man! All right. Let's let's move on, man. Let's let's talk about this. Tiger, Tiger Woods, Woods y'all. Oh so my Tiger God! Man. First of all, that was let an me just, emotional roller coaster for me. I'm let me not gonna say, lie. Let me say this. First of all, uh, Rob, the name of today's episode. You don't have to have this part in it, but name of today's episode is <laughs> is. <laughs> are you a fan of Ooh Baby? I like it raw. Or there's Ooh Baby, I like it raw. Just call that it Ooh was, Baby. That I like was it raw. Baby, I like it raw. That was disrespect. I, wanted, I, could, I, I heard from his voice it was a black dude. I was like, that's Of course. <laughs> no, I, that's here's shameful. why. Because Waz, this is how he started. God damn. Is this the reason, <laughs> is this the reason why Tiger left his life, his wife? Are you a fan of Ooh Baby, I Like It Raw? <laughs> yeah, son. Yeah, when I heard the God damn, I thought somebody was in my house. I was son. like, yo, is somebody watching this shit with me? Then I was like, oh, that's a part son. of the game. It, all, it, it was like, so right, late, Rachel. Late. Rachel, 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 what, what, what's your relationship with Tiger? Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. And then all of a sudden hey. you're, God damn. Hey, bro, before, <laughs> we even, before we even, before the block even got hot, bro, let's talk about my man sliding, taking his wifey to Perkins. I done been to quite a few <laughs> Perkins playing college basketball in Iowa, bro. bro, and it's really not the spot to be. I, I, it's I see not, it's really not. How? It's but man, really not. How? Man. No, it's a real question. How the fuck does Tiger Woods Crazy. Walk into a goddamn Perkins. But it's probably because it's like his neighborhood Sanders. spot. So, like, once you start going there so many. Um, once by the you way, start we're going not there shaming so many, Perkins, by the way. Shout no, but I'm just saying, he's like Tiger Woods. It's not us. We he can probably gets, But he probably gets respect and privacy, and they probably take care of him. 
that's probably the reason. It's like he probably got a relationship with them. He got to be getting some type of special well, treatment. Well, I mean, it, no he, did, way. he definitely got he the got, special treatment from Mindy Lawton. Special, special. <laughs> and, by the, and Mindy Lawton was very mid, by the way. Mid? I was hot. I was mid? hot. She was mid. So, oh, man. yeah. You are, that's Trey, you are the nicest human being I've ever met in my life. She wasn't even mid. mid. I don't even know if you could say she was Reggie Bush. She was well, swag. My man. She well, was swag. swag. Hey, Look, how, 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 how did Jamie do on Ray? Swag. <laughs> but hold on, can we can we slow down before we get to the lady that was his waitress at Perkins and um yo, there's so much crazy shit. Like National Enquirer preserving the used tampon for their records. Why? Wait, hold why on. Is okay. Why is that even happening? What exactly? <laughs> like, exactly. Flag on the man was closing on the church parking lot, bro. Yeah, nah, Tiger was running red lights. He Girl, just he not just a flag, a challenge flag on the play. Oh my god. I was like, yo, there's just so much flagrant stuff happening. Like the fact that Tiger's running the red light, the fact that this lady decided to discard her tampon, just throw it out the window. In not throw church. it in the trash, not like just in throw it church. out the window on. In a, in church, a church parking, parking lot. lot. But um, did they yo, keep them And I mean this respectfully. I don't mean any disrespect, but we, <laughs> we, 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 so they tossed the tampon, but did they keep the rubber? Or like, was it what just rubber? No, why? Why what would rubber? I use it? Oh, What's he's running rubber? red lights with the talk about. Oh, yes. Man, yes. she can't call me when it's sure. gangster. She's, she's, she's going to get pregnant. Her, um, joint. So let's Listen, rewind. He again. having a gangster no. party in the in skate, the, the skate, 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 skate. You know what was the first thing that got me tight when I was watching this? Drip out pink. When when they try to <laughs> when they try to throw my son Chuck and Mike under the bus, like oh, oh Mike yo, that and was Chuck nasty, showed that how was to some nasty vape. Con. Yo. I was what like, a, yo, a, y'all ain't have to do that. Why yo. Mike a married man, Chuck a married man? Don't do that. Don't throw my sons those, under the bus what, like that. But those are past just though, brother. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah, let's, right. let's not be shocked. We all we all knew it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all knew. I, I'm, I'm like I'm, how they I'm try to say Mike and Chuck put them in the life. Like, son wouldn't have ever been to Las Vegas without them. What, what, do, I, what do I say to these women? What do I say to these women? Tell them you fucking tell you what. That's a, that's a true story that I've heard, by the way, before this Shout documentary. Shout out to Michael, Michael Jordan getting that off, though. Like, what just the, the real, it's like, you don't have to say <laughs> nothing. <laughs> You know I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Though. I had I had a similar situation like that, bro. With it, uh, well, Rob, make sure you crack the name. My man had just won a national championship, and he came to LA for the first time. And, and he like, yo, Shorty is nice. What's good with her? I said, nigga, do you know who you are? Yeah. Just yeah, say who hey. you are. Hey, 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 Trey. I see you, and I raise you. I'm gonna say these. <laughs> Three names. Quack all these names, please. At the first summer league, they came to the Cole show. Uh, Cole did a show in Vegas. And they were in the... In the, in the uh, I was at that show. Yeah, they were... And they were, like, acting like, uh, well, what are we... I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Go out there, you tell these hoes, man. Period. Shyness, Period. man. So I, I, I now have uh, even more beef with uh, Amin and Waz because... Uh, I, John Gervais, was also in Vegas during Summer League at that time, and I believe I hung out with Amin uh, during this time. We might even have gone to a party or two, but this is the first time I hear of a J. Cole See? concert. Hey, Jer. Hold Jer. on. No, so hold on. See? I'm thinking about two... Oh, all right. Nah, 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 nah. It's a little bit late. It's a little bit later. It was later. 2000. Keep quacking the names. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a bunch of no, them was at the cold show. Jerv, Jerv is one of those niggas that be like, yo, no invite. Like, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, you came yeah, plus yeah, one everything, big dog. I love one. you. And nigga, I, I got you. And by the way, you hear the, the gratitude there? I remember going to a couple of parties. Nigga, like, I, yeah, Vegas. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I got you right in Vegas, boy. Don't play. Oh, man. So, hey. so, yeah, they threw Mike and Chuck under the bus for no reason. I, I, I can imagine... Chuck or Mike watching the shit at the crib with their lady, and that part come up and it's like, I, I don't know. That shit ago. just made me feel away. That was a long time ago. It was. No, that's a long time ago. That's a long. I was yo when I was young. I was yeah. dumb, but then I found you, baby. Right, right. Now, Mike, <laughs> let's let's all be real. Mike, Mike turned to her and said, "Michael fucking Jordan, what you about to do?" 
<laughs> like I'm not a Bob. Guy. When they said not. Tiger, when they said Tiger was was smashing the Perkins shorty at his crib in his, his wife's crib. bed, rookie, rookie mistake. I said, yo, oh, I'm Tiger you, he's different. He was different. Yo, let me tell you something. First of all, the shit where they just had their first baby and they take a picture and the baby is fresh. You could tell this baby just came out the uterus right now, right? It's fresh. And the dog's all up in the picture. Oh, I was like, ew. Yeah, Tiger's what is a different wrong type of with y'all, though, man? Oh, I was just disgusted by that. He's a <laughs> he, was, he was really killer, too. He had her media trained, bro. Like, everything National Enquirer oh. lie. And like yeah. I'm gonna tell you early on, and then had the sidey call that's, wifey. That's, that's, a, that's that, that was, that was that's a dumb baller. move. That was a dumb move. That's a dumb move. I was like, nope, that's you do not get the side chick on the phone with the wife. There's Stupid. never that's never gonna happen. That's never gonna uh, work out for you. Also, the side chick, she said, after I've been with Tiger, how can I be with a mere mortal again? Like that is the hoest thing I've ever said. Because you know what? All of these women said. Oh, oh Tiger Woods was great. All these women are great. All these women said Tiger is such a nice guy, and he made me feel like he really cared about me. Not one of the women said that nigga broke my back. No, I'm Boston sorry, Nova, Tiger. Though. I mean, bossing over me. Okay, and All go. Right. And we're black. Yeah, no, I mean, look, man, like I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like it definitely should give you a level of confidence moving forward. But like the idea of like, uh, like. The way I'm mean, like again, like, come on, man. That nigga's a corn. <laughs> I don't know, it, man. It, 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 it's, no, it's no, it's it's no way to defend none of that shit. And then like he had all whack work. So, yes, my man had a sexual addiction. Oh, by so, the way, oh girl, her eyes were so close to one another. I was like, what in the world is going? On? Like she, I thought it was one of those things. That last time y'all told me, yeah, that's how she looked now. But back then she was hot. But then I saw like the pictures of her back then. I'm like. Nah, nah. She was never. She was never crazy. Sh- shout out to crazy. my. Shout out to my man. Uh, uh, D. L. Hughley. <laughs> he said, "Tiger don't need marriage counseling. He need diversity training." I was like, that was, "Hey, that man, was, that was tough." But yeah, hey, it, yo, another thing, a blast from the past. Rest in peace, the Griffin, in New York. I oh, remember yeah. very oh, early man, in my club rat days. I had. I that's, used to go to the club. Every now and again. Yeah, that's the club that she worked. That the, you could yeah. tell chick worked at. Which she meant so was that like the work. white version of Cheetahs or whatever? Because I, I mean, all yeah, I know is Cheetahs. It was, it was a bit. It was like, no, but it was you, like. Would you consider, no, would you consider it like played. one oak? Yeah, exactly. It was yeah. a one it's oak. One oak. They it's just a one oak and all of that. But you know, they try to have the elite blacks, yeah. shorties, blacks, and blacks. That would it. Yeah. You know what, though? But you know what, was that him being by himself, especially in a one oak mindset, him drinking so, by himself, definitely fitting because. You still got to be player in those situations 100%. when you at the oak because it's other money in there. Of course, yep, yep. it's you're other not, money. You're not, so you're, you're not going. You're not going up against uh, Waz and Jervin to me. You're oh, going no, up against no, black. You're, you're going up as a black tray in that in that situation. He's That's stupid. a different tax bracket. He's stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm son, yeah, I what type of what type of sociopath though just goes to the club completely dopey? That's I, that's I, crazy I, to me. Can I say right now, the part where they said uh, that the sex addict needs sex to stop the pain. And I was like, I, again, I, I said it when it happened and I say it today. All the stuff they talk about, yeah, sex is the only thing that covers up for, you know, gets you away, gets your mind. I'm like, isn't that for everybody? I'm sorry. When I'm having a bad day and I start having sex, I kind of forget about my bad day. Right. Until I nut. Thanks. And then I'm like, oh my God, my day's terrible. <laughs> and now I just now I just wasted 25 minutes Sorry. doing this. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 psychoanalyzing is, you know, obviously armchair psychiatrist, it's always a, a fool's errand, right? Like them niggas, they don't know what Tiger really felt or why exactly it is he was doing what he was doing, but some was just right. He was out of pocket, man. Like straight up and down. Having the Perkins chick at your crib is crazy. First of all, you should have had an Airbnb cheap. You know what I'm saying? Like, you should have had the side apartment. You should have your own crib. But he he wasn't that clever, though. He wasn't that clever to move. Clearly. Son, he's living in Florida. To just get a cheap-ass condo for where you could. But again, he wasn't that type of savvy. Because listen, the shorty from Griffin 
he would lay up and watch cartoons and eat cereal and be cozy and tell his bitch all his feelings. And you looking in a scenario of like, look at, at all the work or all the chicks that he basically dealt with. His wife didn't get him. And he ain't know how to, that's why he had multiple girlfriends in this scenario, because he didn't know how to be player about it. Nobody schooled him on how to just kind of maneuver in this way. He just kind of stroked his power and felt like he was untouchable. But you basically, you JFK, nigga. You top down. Yeah. I mean, when you when your pop when your pop is uh when your pop is slaying slaying the sides in but front of her in the trailer at the at the at the golf course that you at, yeah, yeah. Eh, you kind of ain't really being put she onto the game. No, how you supposed but, to? Do. But that but that's killer though. Though his pops at least was away. Like he had the mobile joint, the mobile the mobile bus down a camper. Joint. That nigga had a camper. It wasn't even a trailer. You Sorry. give him too much. Too much it was credit. bang bus before bang bus. Bang bu- exactly. <laughs> Shout out to bang bros. But yeah, uh, the, I love the way they set that up though in the beginning of the doc, right? Uh, in part one, where they like Tiger sort of distanced himself from his pops because he knew his pops was messy and doing all of that. And, it's, and we knew what was coming in the second part. And right. it's like, wow, that's mad ironic that like, oh, you cut your dad off for being that way. And then you turned into an even worse savage and killed are, yourself. Are y'all surprised? There are two things that were not mentioned in the doc that really surprised me. One was they didn't have the voicemail of "Hey, it's Tiger," which again, which is yeah, the I needed biggest that. rookie, the biggest rookie move that. of all time. I needed the, that voicemail. The other, the other thing that shocked me was they didn't have the uh, fuzzy Zeller shit. Like in part oh, one, wasn't chicken. that the one where the fried chicken and all yeah. that shit? Yeah, yeah. And even when they brought it up later, when when the 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 president of when the president of uh, of Augusta did the whole like public lashing, that or whatever. That was corny. You know? That was public, corny. But public whipping. Public whipping. But I thought like at that moment they would bring up the fuzzy Zeller shit that happened at Augusta also. But they never mentioned it. I'm like, I, them shits was big, man. I'm kind of surprised they didn't even Fuzzy Zeller was super big. They didn't bring up the Esquire article where basically Charles Pierce, Charles Pierce is in the doc, but they don't talk about his right. article, where he basically, he was supposed to do a profile of Tiger Woods and Tiger Woods basically blew him off. So he just did a story yeah. about the person Shout he was observing. Yeah. And he was just like, yeah, the kid's a party animal. He's getting all kinds of pussy. He's living his life. He's being a young whatever, and it turned into a whole thing. But it's like, Charlie Pierce is like, bro, he's a millionaire. He's in his early 20s. What else, right. the fuck else would he be doing? He, well, that's, he's not a messiah. That's what the, the the family friend said, right? Like, when he came out with the apology press conference, which, by the way, was two and a half months. I thought that shit happened like a week later. This nigga took two and a half months to do this press conference to apologize. Like, why you gotta apologize? If you ain't gotta apologize to nobody, man. You could suck my dick. Uh, you know, like that, that's what I would have said. I would have just been like, yo, fuck you. I fuck whoever I want. This is a problem between me and my wife. If she wanna leave me, okay, that's my problem. That's between me and my family. I don't know oh sh- shit to view it. You think Michael Jordan ever have to apologize for smashing broad? Oh, Nike. hell no, nah, man. Can, can yo. you explain to me? I've never been married before. Shout out to the married homies and shout out to the divorce homies. But adultery, why is it so Adultery. There you go. Why is it such a big stain in celebrity scope? I would say this. It's I would not. Say, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's not. Just like, Tiger was faking the funk. Yeah. He was selling. So, he was selling cats this cookie cutter image. So Waz, let me ask I, you this. So for the example, if biggest, Steph cheated. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So there you That'll go. That'll be a so problem. Wait. 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 Right there. Oh yeah. For sure. So, so the two biggest adultery scandals. What are they? Can you think of them? Tiger Woods. One. And what's the other? It's real easy. Real easy. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Okay, three. My bad. What about Magic Johnson? Nope. Wasn't a scandal. The adultery wasn't a scandal. Right. It's the AIDS part took over. The AIDS was a scandal. The scandal part. I can't believe you guys can't can't remember the other one. Here's a hint. We're going to be talking about him a lot in a week. Tom Brady? Kobe Bryant. Oh, Kobe. Oh, oh shit. my lord. Oh, Kobe. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah, about Kobe. Kobe. I forgot about yeah, that. And, and, and so that. Tom Brady didn't do Tom adultery. He just left his pregnant wife yeah. with Giselle. My bad. And, but we don't talk about it. Why don't we talk about it? 
You know why we don't talk about it? We don't. Yeah. Because that nigga never like pretended to be. Nah, he never. Hi guys. To... Hi, I'm nah. wholesome. Right. Nah. I sell Nutella never. and Buicks. Like the... never. Kobe and Tiger was out here being what the safe black man. Facts. Facts. The safe black man. And so for them to make the mistake that clearly is always a risk when you're dealing at that level of fame and fortune, right? It should have been like Michael cheated on his wife. Patrick Ewing was part of a gold club fucking FBI investigation. Uh, it, it, all these guys, all these guys out here have had their affairs, have broken up, have some have given half or whatever. And and we're not here to judge that. But if you go out here and decide my image is going to be Mr. Wholesome, which as a black public figure, that takes on different levels, right? Because they're putting a different kind of pressure on you to be perfect, right? Then you're in trouble. I mean, one of the quotes that they said that stuck out was, be careful of the image you create for yourself. Yep. Well, that was Simple. from the douchebag. I hate that douchebag. I had want to punch that nigga in the face. Can, but I'm just but which, was, which but, dude are you talking about? The, the bow tie guy with the the round oh, glasses. Oh God, the yeah, national I wanted to break those glasses. Dude. He was yeah, so nerd. disrespectful. He was, was like, and America nerd. enjoyed it. He was so proud of himself. Yeah, so happy yeah. being a snitch. Can we can we it's touch crazy. on that though? Because I think I think we uh we kind of glossed over that last week. And shout out to uh. What's the homie's name that was uh, his pop's homie that was like the only Family person friend. that was... Yeah, like the only person that wasn't snitching. The only one was just like, right. nah, we're not touching on that. There were so many people just snitching and ratting <laughs> in this entire documentary. It was crazy to me. And they all started off with the... My man from the first one was the best one. Oh, shit. Oh, man, he'll probably kill me if he knew I was talking Sorry about, about this. Don't, then don't say it. Then don't say it. Sorry. Just don't say it. Like, well, why so are there so many that, that, that motherfucker was wrong. But I'm going to tell you this, man. You you fuck over a girl, man. I like fuck her over where her life is now fucked up because of you. Yeah, man. You're going to have to expect some of that shit. The the I'm caddy, probably, he yeah. fucked over the caddy. That was fucked like, up. Like, cause, Williams. like he, he ain't had I mean, to but he fire. also gave that caddy to, he also changed that caddy's life too, right? Sure. But, but Jerv, okay, you, Jerv, the, the but thing, that doesn't the give thing, you the right to be an asshole. Yeah. The, the, li the line that, that, that the caddy said that I really respected, he <laughs> said, I was okay with him firing, firing me as his caddy. I didn't realize he was gonna fire me as a friend too. Like, it's like, come up. on, man! Ain't, ain't no friends in this. Yeah, he was. He was. All right, so, was so there's nah, no friends. Bro. It's my ass off for you, nigga. Like what? Yo, I would be yeah. famous. You man, know what else? You know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Trey. No, I was just saying, like, you know, he was in his wedding, and the fact that yeah. best man in cat, your wedding, boy, a, 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 a cat like that to be like that, kind of switching off and on switch. To be like, all right, yeah, you can go caddy for homie. And yeah. then be like, nah, you can't. Hate those type of cats. But but you also got to know your audience, my G. You got to know your audience. It's like it's like me, right? Like, Wait, AI, AI is my pick. You got to know your audience. Like, Was that a test, though? You felt like? No, it's not, it's not a test. test but you, Tiger you got in his feelings. He's like, fuck that. I don't want him. You, want him. Know Tiger. you should know Tiger is going to snap. You've been around main man for 13, whatever, some change years. You know damn well you can't can't ask. That's like me being a fan of AI and having an opportunity to, to, to meet Boy and have a conversation. At that moment, I decide, okay, am I going to risk it all and have this conversation? Because I've heard the stories. I know how this can go left. Main man's probably heard plenty of stories about how Tiger's going left on people. He knew the risk he was taking by asking. Yeah, but, I don't know. But no, but but my thing is he did it. He did it respectfully. You know what I think? I think somebody in his camp said, you will let that nigga do that? That's how it always goes. He gonna down. give up all your secrets. Yeah, whenever niggas change their mind like that, it's not because they did some thinking on their own. It's because somebody said, "You will let that nigga do that," and then that's it. They put seeds in their in their head. Would y'all uh, y'all have done it? The tiger hit y'all with the old, your, your your buddy. Son, as a man, dude felt like he had to do it. Right, like it's like, bro, this is my Germ, homie. That's like you're not working. Thing. You're not working right now. Yeah. This is my friend asking me to do something for him. I'm gonna do what I do for my people. And it's one, bro. Like, it's one tournament, okay, man. On. It's one Here's tournament. And by though, the way, well, hold on. Me and I need to meet you on the pod. And yeah. Jerv says, "Yo, can you come on my pod?" Right. And it means exactly. like, yeah, Trey, you can do it. 
and I go do it for Jerv, and nigga like, nah, nigga, you fired. It's crazy. Jerv, what and, the and fuck? You, hold on. Okay. You fired? You I, fired, I and, don't, you and don't talk to me again. Good. And don't never talk to me again. And think about never that. Never talk to me again. Come on, Jerv. Come on, man. That don't make no Yo, sense. So, I want to talk to y'all about what the, a character that's that's gotten on my nerves a little bit, and that's the the first girlfriend. Of course, man. She has yeah, the, she, she got the been big rock on too. her hand. So she's now married to a dude. And she's up here on a documentary proclaim, proclaiming her <clears throat> love and devotion for Tiger Woods. And like, yeah. she's still tight about it. And she, I'm like, yo, your yeah, man no. is cool with this. Yeah, I mean, no, bro, she, she lost out on the Billy, bro. I was like, like, hell yeah, nah, she's still tight you about know that what, shit. Though? Listen, he okay with it because that bag about to come after whatever they did for that interview. Nah, man. That's the, nah, they don't pay for documentaries, man. Son, she was doing so she a lot. she ain't getting no bread for no appearance. She got, she got uh, nothing, bro. She'll write a book. She can write a I'm book. Sure she, I'm sure if she wanted to, I'm sure she so could I'm do gonna that. You, I'm going to tell you this. Like, dinner last night was really awkward. <laughs> so I'm going to say at that house, dinner was very awkward. Um, speaking of that, like, I just want to say, I want to bring up my favorite probably my favorite scene out of the entire thing, other than my man saying, God damn, is that the reason why Tiger left his wife? <laughs> Are you a fan of Ooh Baby, I Like a Roll? We need to have that clip, like I said, uh, Rob, at the beginning of the, of the episode. But my favorite scene was the, the DUI stop, where they told a nigga, yo, tilt your head back, say the alphabet, not in a, in a sing-song way, you know, a, as you whatever, right? Do you understand the instructions? Yes. Repeat the instructions back to me. Don't sing the national anthem backwards. Yeah, this nigga was so slack when he said that shit. I was like, yes, yes. And but then his mugshot. You know what I noticed? His eyes were so white. It was like he dripped visine in them. How's that possible? My but eyes are more. Looked, that nigga like, Tiger was looking like One Punch Man. But he <laughs> looked like he was in another space, though. He was. He was so high, bro. That was crazy. He, he was said, all, he was all five of them things. He said, well, I'm, I'm just headed to Orange County. Man, <laughs> man, you're, you're home, homie fell asleep tying his shoe. Yo, you're oh, you're in geez. Jupiter, Florida. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga said, oh. Hey, yeah. could you imagine telling somebody that you about to drive oh, to fucking my goodness, county, bro, bro? And you're in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 yo, and Yo, you know what? I, I'm with you with, with the uh, with wise with his uh, with his exes. Like, dude, like, yo, you want to say on this documentary that that made you think that he was thinking about like coming back to coming back home and bringing up all these memories? Yo, you're doing married. A lot. She's doing yo, a lot, son. Doing a lot. I, like, son, you doing, doing a lot. Like, yes, you was the first person to give him, you know, a piece of pussy or whatever, and. Y'all had y'all little whatever, and it's great, like respect, but like you doing a lot to be harboring all of this still. So from so 30 years ago, nah, son, nah, son, you gotta relax, ma. You gotta relax. You gotta relax. <laughs> like you gotta you gotta fall back. Yo, so so uh last thing I wanna wrap up with here is uh, One Night in Miami. Uh, this is the Regina King movie that's on Amazon Prime. It's about the night of the Ali Liston fight. Ali Liston won. Muhammad Ali won. He was still cash clay at the time. And afterwards, him, Sam Cooke, Jim Brown, and Malcolm X all met in a hotel room uh, and just basically, quote unquote, celebrated the victory. Um, and this movie is kind of a creative imagining of what the conversations might have been. So there's no, this isn't like a, a docudrama or whatever. It's fictional. It is fictional. So, because there's a lot of shit in there where these niggas are going at each other. I'm like, I don't remember any tension between Malcolm X and Sam Cooke, but this might be me. But It was uh, a long ass night, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, for real. Bro, it was long. I sit there, I'm sitting there fight, like, damn, fight, It's like 10, 11 o'clock at night, yeah. bro. This it's a good five, six hours, and the sun never niggas came up. Niggas went to the store. Niggas done sat in there, signed autographs. Niggas done caught up, told eight what stories. What on the roof? 
He went on the roof. <laughs> like, I, I, feel, I feel like Brother Malcolm should have had a little bit more security too than them two than the two homies just sitting outside of his room. But maybe I'm just going too too much into nah, detail. He was he was he was funking at that time too though. Yeah, he wasn't. They weren't. Wasn't, they weren't really wasn't, looking out he for him on like a good that. End. Mm -mm. There's a reason. There's a reason why he got shot a year later, Jerf. Like. <laughs> Too shy. It wasn't yeah. because was, was the security was super tight, right? <laughs> um, yo, but uh, just I wrote down a couple of quotes from it that I really enjoyed uh, because even though it is fictional, I still like I still like how they went at each other. Uh, Sam Cook told Malcolm, "What do you do? You just hang around stars. Maybe your daddy ain't beat you hard enough, like to have a talent." I was like, <laughs> "Damn!" Like, Jesus. I like. I, <laughs> If I were Jim Brown, I would be like, yeah, you got to go whoop his ass now. <laughs> you can't let a nigga say that to you. Then Malcolm said back to him, you're a wind-up toy in a music box. You're a monkey with an organ grinder because all he do is make pop songs for the charts and not make a real, more substantial music. Uh, by the way, that is real, that Sam Cooke heard Blowing in the Wind by Bob Dylan and felt so embarrassed that a white man wrote that song. That That's why he wrote Change is Gonna Come. That is a true story. Wow. But obviously, it's not because Malcolm X like shat on him in a hotel. Right, room. right, right. Uh, Jim Brown saying, "Do you expect the dog to give you a medal for not kicking it one day?" That like I was like, I know they made this movie, you know, in the last year or so, so it's obviously it's very relevant. But still, there's a lot of white people that need to hear that one. There's a lot of yes. white people that need to hear that one today, today yes, specifically, today, today specifically. Uh, and then the final, the final quote that. It was started very early in the movie when Jim Brown visited the dude from his hometown in, in Georgia. And the guy's like, man, you are credit to this community, to the state of Georgia. I'm proud to live in the house where Jim, or in the, in the place where Jim Brown was born. And you doing, you're doing a great thing on the field. And we're all so proud of you. And man, you're great. And like, I'm like, oh, okay. And then he said, yo, we got to move this furniture. Like, you want me to help you? I'm like, oh, Jim, you know, we don't allow niggers in the house. Yo, that shit broke. Gotta say I didn't said, see that damn. one coming. <laughs> De definitely did not see that one coming. Nah, I had no idea. Was killer, though. I, I like I like to to highlight a couple of things too. Um, not not specific lines, but like you know, I really thought how it highlighted their failures first. So like Muhammad Ali getting knocked out, you know what I'm saying? Sam yeah. Cook bombing it on the at the Copa. You know That's a I'm true saying? story, by the way. The bombing at the Copa, by the way, as my Muhammad Ali picture falls down behind me, I, I have it up just for this this one special episode today. But the bombing at the Copa actually happened. That's a real true story. And he sang white songs and he bombed. And then he came back like a couple of years later and he said, fuck it, I'm doing my shit. And when he did, they uh, loved him. They loved him yeah. yeah. And then you got Jim Brown going to visit, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. not being able to, you know, be accepted. And then you got Malcolm X, obviously, just hella paranoid and et cetera. But like you said, with that speech and all that other stuff, although it's fiction and although it's based in a, in a specific timing, it's all relevant today. And some of those things were very motivational. I thought the dude that played Malcolm X was, acted his ass off. I thought the guy yeah. that played Sam Cooke acted his ass off. Leslie Odom. That's Leslie yeah. Odom. Leslie yeah. Odom. I wasn't crazy about Muhammad Ali's character, but he looked like him. You know what I mean? Close in looks and stuff like that. Um, but overall, like it, some some certain things gave me chills and and kind of was was one of those motivational situations of kind of like what you are actually doing for your community. You know what I'm saying? Because again, Sam Cook's like trying to get these bars off. Like I own my masters. Yeah, I'm doing true. this, that, and the third. I'm putting on all this true. other shit. And he's just like, look, bro, like, but what are you doing for us? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like a self-reflection because you can make all the money in the world. You can forget. Like, that's the thing. Uh, I think he made the quote about coming back to the neighborhood. Yeah. And it was like, people do that all the time saying, oh, we're going to come back and get you. For what? When you could just be, you know what I mean? Like, why are you not trying to assist right then and there during that time? So it definitely kind of was a stinger for me personally. Um, but I really enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say it's the best fucking movie in the world, but it was probably one of the most enjoyable watches I had, like, that I checked out since we've had referred movies or TV shows to people. Right. And it was better than Tenet to me. 
<laughs> I'll say that. Yeah, so, shout out to Regina to King for making her uh, directorial debut. Yeah. Salute yeah. to her. Well deserved. Um, the 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 line from Sam Cooke. By the way, the story about the Valentinos and the uh, the Rolling Stones playing it, the same song, and it went number one on all the charts. That shit is a true story. And like, yeah, they got it's like Dre Day only made Easy Payday is what I thought about when he was telling that story. Uh, and he said, you know, everyone's fighting for a slice of the pie. I want the goddamn recipe. That's a fucking bar right there, man. That's a bar and a half. But it is. It's like, it's crazy because they all went about it. Because they were all instrumental figures in the civil rights struggle. They all went about it different ways, right? And that's the thing where Malcolm, again, or this character of Malcolm, I like, he kind of was very one-track minded. Like, there's only one way to get this. And, and his militancy was was true and factual, I think. That's, that's a, a, a right thing. It's like, you can't fence it. But at the same time, he couldn't see the vision that Sam could see, for instance. He couldn't see the flaws in himself. How Jim Brown telling him about light skin, why are your Derb, why are your light skin brothers the most militant ones, huh? We're not we're not doing that today, good brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, not, not on this glorious birthday. Not that on MLK Day. Today. No, sir. We are not doing that. We all men, we are all the same. Any uh closing remarks from anybody about this? About uh Happy Yams Day. Yeah, um, happy, happy, MLK. happy AMs Day. Of course, happy MLK Day good to everybody. People. Um, we came out and we worked on Martin's Day, which as a black person, I feel a way about, but we did it for you guys. <laughs> They're going to cancel Wise. the Super Bowl on our ass. Wise, can I just double shout you out, brother? Because not only did you come out and work on MLK, brother, you know what I'm saying? Clearly, we can hear you know, you you're, you're you're under the weather. You're not your normal self, man. I'm so not. I just want not, I just want to shout no. you out for for my flu game. This, and I'm saying tough. Don't say game. this is flu game for sure. Thank, oh, you. I, thank you. I won't lie. I just thought that was was on the night after just waking like, up. You know, yeah. On a, no. on a holiday on a holiday weekend, I just thought you know yeah okay so Sunday <laughs> night was it's been a long weekend. I'll tell you that much. All right. Well, uh, on behalf of Sick Waz and, and Big Jerv and Black Trey the Millionaire, this is Amino Hassan. Shout out to Rob Lopez on the one and twos. Black Opinions Batter Motherfucker. Like, subscribe, rate, review. All the good shit. Share it. Share it, share it, share it. Peace out. <laughs>